There will be traffic on the internet that is disrupted, perhaps after the High Court's decision yesterday, to confirm that it is lawful for the public service to sack one of their staffers who is criticising the government she worked for, although anonymously, on Twitter. It's being interpreted as a, uh, a gag on free speech and a gag on public servants. But there's more to this, I suspect, than meets the eye. It, of course, is in the build-up, has to be seen in the build-up, to the Israel Folau free speech test case, which is almost certainly on its way to the High Court as well. James Patterson is now a Liberal senator for Victoria. He's also a free speech activist and formerly in his position at the Institute of Public Affairs was one of the more prominent public voices arguing for more and freer free speech right around Australia. Senator Patterson, good morning to you. Good morning, John. How do we interpret the High Court's ruling that uh, it's OK and you can lawfully sack a public servant who is criticising her employer? It's a breach of the Public Service Code and you can't hide behind the cloak of anonymity to do so. I understand why people are concerned about this case, John, because I'm one of those people who believes that employers are increasingly and regrettably really, trying to control what their employees say on social media. Having said that, though, I think there are some areas where it should be permissible for an employer to restrict what an employee can say on social media, and that is where it's directly relevant to their employment. And I think the facts in this case are really important. Um, as I understand it from public reporting on the case, among Ms Banerjee's nine thousand tweets about uh, immigration matters, she was not merely critical of government policy in this area, but was critical specifically of the Department of Immigration, her employer, uh, her, some of her fellow employees at the department and the administration of the department. Now, there is not an employer in the country who would be happy with their employees publicly disparaging them on social media. Publicly but anonymously. Is that, does that make it different? I think that's a really fascinating aspect of this case, John, and uh, I think this is something that we're now really grappling with on a wider scale. To what extent do we want to permit anonymity online? If you scroll through the social media feeds of politicians and media figures and celebrities, the most vile, abusive content typically comes from people who are anonymous. Yes, and a indeed. lot of people have said, well, well, the solution to that should be to ban anonymity online. You should have to put your driver's licence in when you get a Twitter account. Now, as sympathetic as I am to people who have that view, I actually think there is good reasons sometimes for people to be anonymous on social media and for government to take that kind of decisive action would be too far in my view. Under what circumstances should people be able to hide behind the cloak of anonymity online? Well, it's really hard for me to judge, but I think some well, examples... You are, you are the one making the case. That was what you said. There are some circumstances where people should still be able to be anonymous. What are those circumstances? Well, I think it's a question of individual judgment, partly, John, but also let's say... Sorry, example, the person themselves decides whether it's appropriate for them to be anonymous? I sh that, that's laughable. Well, I don't, I don't think it is at all, John, because they're the one who's got to weigh up the risks and the benefits of doing that. A public servant who decides, for example, to be a whistleblower about something that they're concerned about might have very good reasons to want to be uh, anonymous. Of course, they are taking risks if they go down that route, and that is a judgment that they have to make. Whether they're prepared well, that's why we have risks. whistleblower protection laws. There are specific procedures to follow if you want to be a whistleblower in most large private and Indeed. or public and sector organisations, so that doesn't stand up well, to scrutiny. But as, as you'd be aware, John, uh, there's been considerable criticism of the whistleblower laws. We yeah, have in they'll, this get country, refined, including they'll get refined, they'll get fine-tuned from time no, to but time. But important, John, including by the Federal Court, which has said that they're you know, way too complex, way too hard to follow, and a lot of people who genuinely seek out to follow them fall afoul of them, and they look to other yeah. means to... OK, they may be imperfect, but they, they in due course and in time, I'm sure they will be polished and refined. But it is, surely it is, it is ridiculous to say that each individual person decides whether or not it's appropriate for them to remain anonymous, and that's that's a system. That's that's no system at all. I don't think so, John. Uh, in a free society, I think people have to make these judgments for themselves and stand by the consequences of those. We don't live in a well. That's why state. you don't do anything anonymously. You have to be accountable. If you and I say something defamatory on this radio program right now, or if you write something and publish it in print, you are accountable for it. Why should it be any different online? Oh, I just think there are good reasons why people might fear for the consequences of them speaking like out. What? It might be because of the their third time I've social asked you, like circumstances. What? It might be because of their social circumstances. John, what do you mean? What do you mean friends. about their social circumstances? What does that actually mean? 
Well, it might be that they have views that are starkly different from their friends and family and they may feel that they will be ostracised for publicly stating what they what they say and they may feel the only safe way to do that is anonymously online. And I don't object to people... That's just a licence for trolling and that's one of the biggest problems for mental health, for racial vilification, for abuse of people in the most toxic way it is, in fact, I think, at the very core of where democracy is coming unstuck at the moment. And, John, as someone who is in a category that's on the receiving end of that on a daily basis, I absolutely appreciate that. Some of the things that I've seen online are incredibly vile and disturbing. Well, wouldn't you like to see it come to an end? Well, I I think the mechanism of that is really important. Should should social media companies take more responsibility for what's said online? Absolutely. Should violent threats be acted on swiftly? Absolutely. Um, Should anonymity entirely online be banned? Uh, Even if it was technically feasible, which I doubt it is. No, I don't think that's desirable. The issue here is a fascinating one on so many other levels. The public sector union that covers public servants says it's now making different categories of employees in the community. There's a category of people who work for the public service who are no longer entitled to express a personal view. And then there are people in other forms of employment who can, and that's unfair to public servants. What's your view on that? Uh, my view, John, is that Ms Banerjee should be absolutely free to criticise government policies in areas that are not directly relevant to her employment. Had her 9,000 tweets been about climate change policy and her views on that, I think it would have been un- unfair and unjustified to sack her. But given that they were directly relevant to her personal employment with the public service, I think that puts it in a different category. One day, Senator James Patterson may be a minister in a government with public servants working in his portfolio... Uh, Surely you can understand how you don't want people who are working on your policies going online to undermine them in their private life. They're supposed to to be pursuing their professional responsibilities, implementing the policies of the government of the day, not undermine them. I wouldn't be personally uh, upset about criticism. I think that comes with the territory that we're in. But absolutely, John, if the public servant is seeking to undermine the relevant policies that it's their job to implement or as part of collectively of the department to implement, I think we do have a problem. Do you link this to the looming High Court, uh, almost inevitable High Court appointment when the Israel Folau case eventually gets there? Can you or can't you sack someone for expressing views that are regarded as hate speech, which they say are their religious views, as part of a contract of employment? Can you limit them? It's not a perfect analogy. If, for example, Israel Folau had instead been criticising Rugby Australia, saying rugby's a boring sport, don't watch it, it's run badly by bad people, uh, I think Rugby Australia would be on stronger grounds to sack him. But in this instance, they've sacked him for his unrelated religious views to his role as a sports person. And equally, had Miss Banerjee been tweeting about her unrelated religious views uh, to her professional role, I think it would have been inappropriate to sack her. So they're not a perfect analogy, but I understand why people are drawing that connection. So you... You could be sacked for saying some things online, but if it's expressing a view that's supposedly in keeping with whatever religious views you have, that's an exemption. You get a free pass because you say, oh, that's what my God told me to say. For me, John, the important distinction is not whether it's religious speech or not, but whether it's directly relevant to your employment. If you sent 9,000 tweets criticising the ABC, or if in my previous life I sent 9,000 tweets criticising the IPA, I think both of our employers would have reasonable recourse to sack us. Uh, But if we were tweeting unrelated things to our professional roles, I don't think it's a good idea for employers to sack people in that instance. Thank you for your time. Senator James Patterson, Victorian Liberal Senator and former IPA spokesperson, Institute of Public Affairs spokesperson on free speech issues.